let's talk about where you want to go next. Um, you mentioned publicly and you discussed on our abundance stage the idea of, of uh, democratized and decentralized AI. Um, let's define that first. What is that? Why is it important? And what do you want to do there? Yeah, I think that when I said I'm going to move to do my part in decentralizing AI, people were like, isn't that just open source? You give the technology, right? And then anyone can use it. But it isn't. A decentralizing AI has a few important components. One is availability and accessibility. Everyone should be able to access this technology for fruits of labor. And there's some very interesting political and other elements around that. Number two is the governance of this technology. You have centralized governance because the models are the data. Like there's a recent Databricks thing, a model where they show that you have massive improvements from data. We all know that, you know? Who governs the data that teaches your child or manages your health or runs your government? That's an important question I think too few are asking, and we need data transparency and other things like that. Um, so accessibility, you know, you've got the um, governance aspect of that. And then finally, you have how does it all come together? Is it a single package or is it a modularized infrastructure that people can build on and is available kind of everywhere? You know, does it require monoliths and central servers where if it goes down and you have an outage on GPT-4, you're a bit messed up or someone can attack and co-opt it? I think that those are kind of the key elements that I was looking at when I was talking about decentralizing AI. And, you know, I've come up with an infrastructure to do that, I hope, um, as well. 